Welcome back to the Flooring Africa channel. Here we are in the workshop studio in Northgate Estate, Cape Town. And today we have a very special guest with us. We have Nati from PK. Nati is the product guru who's going to give us a little bit more insight today on adhesives for engineered timbers. Engineered timber as in flooring, obviously. Uh, welcome, Nati. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, you know, we have a lot of products, a lot of exciting products going down in the South African and African market of engineered timber. We have quite a few uh, installers that potentially are struggling a little bit with regards to trying to fully understand how to manage the adhesive product, how much to use, how to, what tools to use. So I'd like to get into a couple of stepping stones that maybe we should be paying attention to. And maybe you could help us in just like starting off with what we should be thinking about. Yes, point number one being the materials. Um, if you look at the sausage that's lying next to you, it's, it's damaged. Oh, gee, it is. And, okay. Um, you can feel it's cured already. It's hard. Yeah. And that process will actually happen on the front end of that sausage internally. Okay, like where it's crimped? Uh, yes. When it's damaged, the, 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 it's a moisture cured product. So that little tip will become harder and harder all the way through. And it'll start traveling down. Like, yes. like if I've got a tube of silicone and it gets uh, dried at the end of the nozzle. Kind exactly. Of thing. And if you put that in your short barrel gun and you try and push out the product, you can actually break your gun. Okay. okay. So uh, the contractor, and that's point number one for me, would be check my materials when I purchase it. Uh, that it's okay. Check that the sausages are soft because you can buy a box, come to site, half of them are hard. Understood. Awesome. So, you know, it does have a, a shelf life or maybe you're recycling stock out of your storeroom and you've picked up some old sausages. Yes. So it's just about checking the stock before you head out into the, you know, you could be ha traveling 100 kilometers to your destination. Uh, batch numbers, always uh, check, check those. Uh, expiry dates on the box. Okay, uh, the, the expiry date will be on the box. Yes. Okay. And, and make sure the product is right. So that is to do with the quality of your product that you buy. So uh, that's the first part. I, I check my material before I go to site. It's all good. And did I actually take enough material? Oh, critical component. And this is a sensitive one because this is also how we differentiate between uh, some installers may be under quoting or under supplying volume and how do you work out the volume ratios? Yes, oftentimes the guy that quotes the least glue will win the job. Yeah, true but story. Within a few ah. months the floors can start lifting. So uh, th that is why we have quite a few trowels here to demonstrate just the fact that I can have uh, the wrong trowel Yes. With the wrong uh, a hole size or whatever on the, on the side, and I will get a different thickness of application. That is to say, I'm going to use trowels, because sometimes you have a different method of application. But it's very important that, apart from the materials being correct, that my tools need to be correct as well. Understood, understood. So when we start talking about using a full trowel system, we'll be using a 4x4 uh, a, a four four square notched trowel like the one on the far end I believe um, a serrated trowel I think is another term that guys will use yes and uh, in 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 certain companies they will tell you which glues this trowel should be used for so you just, you just read there the trowel is four by four by four and we propose those types of glues fantastic okay so as always obviously today we're dealing with PK but each adhesive supplier will state exactly how much glue, what trial to use for the floor type that you're trying to bond, because that will uh, uh, ensure that their warranty is in play. If you've applied too little glue, which is what you've just mentioned, you could be voiding the entire warranty and putting the entire project at risk. Barry, uh, the approach that I have is, it's a generic approach. Yeah. Whichever company's glue I use, uh, because sometimes you come and collect glue from a supplier that doesn't have stock. Then you have to have a secondary supplier yep. that gives you an equivalent product. Um, the amount of glue that you use, apart from the trowel, looking at this trowel, someone uh, repaired this trowel because obviously it broke and they made a good job of it to fix it like this. But 
in using it as a flat trial, this, this is a bit of a problem because ideally you want it to be perfectly smooth. But cleaning of my tools, yep. um, keeping it um, uh, in a usable condition because the more I use it, the more the teeth wear away. Oh, strange that. I'm busy scraping it on uh, cement or concrete, etc. Uh, day in, day out, and the teeth wear out. I'm like, hmm. So <laughs> then what happens is I apply less and less glue. Critical factor. So it's important for the applicators to keep those tools clean and to say, okay, we only do three rooms and then we get a new trowel. Okay. And I mean, we've seen guys taking files to try and make the tools new again. Uh, it can only go so far and then you've got to really get, get rid of it, get new ones. All right. So when we're talking about the, the, the notch size <coughs> for a trowel, there is a, a very scientific reason for them being the size that they are depending on the floor type that you're gluing down. And if you're wearing away the steel, you're going to be applying less volume of glue. And this, this brings us to like, uh, I don't know if I'm jumping the gun, but it, it really brings us to a critical point that in order for the <coughs> warranty to be in place, you need to have a fixed volume of adhesive down per square meter. That's correct, Barry. We say that a sausage, which um, is a 600 mil sausage, weighs about 800 grams. And that should cover about one square meter. This is an absolutely essential methodology that we use here in South Africa. And I know that a couple of various underlay um, systems also have a pre-perforated system where you're actually just applying the cord in set uh, spacings which makes it really easy and it uh, uh, really controls the amount of volume and also adds a extra acoustic benefit to the installation. But yeah, I think the, the spacing of the cords is very important and also the height of the, uh, the cords, the okay. volume that you're putting down. All right. Right, so we, we want to put the slug, as they call these, uh, or the sausage, uh, into the gun and... Um, and cut off the front end before we put on the, the nozzle. Sorry about that. No, Barry, I should do that. Right, so the, the nozzle part determines the thickness of my bead. Correct. And um, we use the standing knife to cut it off. Ideally, when we're doing cord bonding, we want to do 150 mil apart, our lines, and we want to make sure that we get between an 8 and a 10 millimeter bead. So one can measure it here and cut it. On site, the guys will just cut it off, and then the application is very simple. About 150 mil, and we can actually take a tape measure and check that our bead is thick enough. Okay. Don't touch it. And then our timber is squeezed down onto the wet adhesive. Now, very often the applicator applies the glue to the timber, not to the floor. Correct and then they install it one by one by one as they go along. So this product um, does have a fast curing time. And to tell you exactly how much that curing time is depends on the temperature of the day. And the airflow and a whole lot of different factors. So all you need to know for sure is you have time issues with products that cure by ox oxygen or the air. Correct. Um, it's a moisture curing product, so you need to move your backside to get your timber down. All right, in this system of doing uh, like a 10 mil cord every 150, are we still gonna maintain our roughly a uh, one sausage per square meter? Exactly, 100%. You can actually work it out scientifically, take your calculator, measure your timber, and, and you will see that with a 190 mil, 1.9 meter plank, three of those will give you one square meter. So the applicator can know if he does full planks Three planks, one sausage. Three planks, one sausage. It gets a bit of a gray area when you're doing smaller pieces, then Correct. difficult. But 
the applicator that does this process, he will actually get the handle of it, how to cut his nozzle yeah. to get the correct thickness. Mm. So all he needs to then remember is, okay, this is about 150 mil. I need to space these that far apart. Okay, and then once we press our sample into that, we're going to get the correct coverage to get a solid bond. Yes, that's for sure. Okay, let's do it. So I want you to just see the amount of squeeze out you get as you press down. You'll, you'll see that the product moves a little bit and you want to be sure that all the lines are touching. Um, and that, I mean, it can bring us to a next hairy topic and that is my floor surface. How flat should a floor be? And what is the accepted um, level of undulation that we can have? And according to SANS, it's three millimeters over three meters. Yeah. If I should put down a straight edge and measure. Now, we, we see horrific applications. Of we floors. do, we do on a regular basis. So um, that is why uh, you, in certain areas, you may have to apply another amount similar to the first amount right. to, to cater for that undulation. And it's difficult to quote for that, for the applicator to know exactly how much extra glue to take to site. I think this comes back to um, the installer really needs to understand the science of the materials that he's using. Um, the sales rep, when you're actually costing up the project, really needs to be paying attention to the screed and understand as well the science. As in, do I a cost for a self-leveling compound or grinding the, the substrate, or are we going to understand that we're going to be using a higher volume of adhesive in this application because of that site condition? So it really is, you really need to manage and understand the, the math in how to cost up accordingly and not compromise the, the integrity of the installation. So you can think, if I have a floor that has quite a lot of variance, if I use a trowel and there's a little dip, I'm going to fill up all those dips with glue. Yes. And Very I think that point. is one of the reasons why applicators may prefer cord bonding versus full bonding. Mm. Because if I have to fill up all the pockets with glue, it's going to be quite costly. Okay. And so this technique has come about for local conditions where we... Our installers aren't necessarily having the budget to properly prep the site. Ultimately, we just need to make sure that we can guarantee the end results for the consumer. I'm still back on the topic of a trial should last so long and then it should be replaced. Yes. Because if you're doing a full bond application, um, your trowel will wear away, doesn't matter which trowel it is. may take a bit longer yep. th than, than with, for instance, the LVT, but definitely my trowel needs to be checked. I need to replace my trowel. And for us to, to demonstrate the, 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 the full bond application, ideally you must test your trowel to see if you do get a square meter per sausage out of the trowel. I think a, a great technique is that if you've like got a 30 square meter room, you can go and take 30 sausages and put it in a corner and know that you ultimately should be plus or minus be hitting that full volume of adhesive for that area rather than just having your entire project's adhesive in a back storeroom and then you're just pulling as you need. Um, it, it really is worthwhile segmenting your product to each ter uh, area yes. so that you can just keep on track because you'll start noticing as if, you're, you're, if your trial is really starting to wear out you'll start noticing that you're applying less and less product and that you'll be able to address it sooner before it becomes an issue. I know you get different quality uh, of trowels. Yes. Um, so some trowels will very easily break or wear away quicker. Yeah. Um, so it is um, a mindset that I quote for tools. That Absolutely, the contractor should you have. have to. And on top of the materials that you mentioned just now, I should also quote for wastage. Because whatever the reason may be, I need to add, and that value is normally around 10% that you add. Interesting that that is pretty much along the lines of when you're calculating the floor covering material, we add 7 to 10%. Yes. So we need to include that for our adhesive as well. Yes. Can we just do this uh, section of uh, just the full bonding? So the product is not supplied in 5 litre buckets. 
uh, it's applied in sausages, and that um, application now we want to do the full bond, we still have the same sausage. And you can see what I've done here is exactly as if I would have done cord bonding. Mm -hmm. So that's the same amount of material that I now have to spread over that area. Now, we mentioned this trowel, but funny enough, some people use this trowel. All right, well, let's stick to the standard one for now. And I'm going you don't to, want to confuse issues. And I want to show you this trowel has been worn away on purpose on that section so that we can see what it does. Now, do I keep my trowel like that when I apply or at that? And that is approximately the angle that we want. So it's 30 to 45 degrees. That's right. And we can see that we do get with the beads that I've applied full cover over this area. And you can see now what happened here, where the teeth are a little worn bit down. worn down, I get an incorrect application method. Absolutely. So, this is like, it seems like it's common sense, but yet I've been on many job sites documenting many ins installations and I actually did an Instagram post the other day where I was talking about the condition of your trial <laughs> and uh, it seems that you know we have we have a lot of um, self-employed installers who work as contractors moving from retailer to retailer and potentially there isn't always the affordability or the costing allowance for trials and this really needs to be addressed. Yes, Barry, it's a, it's, it's a universal problem of planning forward and doing maintenance. Um, and, and this using of a trowel over and over again and actually taking a grinder or a file to try and make it work yeah. is because there was no planning to buy new tools or to look after the tools. So it is it's, it's a challenge for us. But I think what we've demonstrated here is whether you do cord bonding or full bonding, you need to stick to your spread rate. Spread rate. Very, very important. Absolutely critical. You need to look at the tools to make sure your tools are good. And you need to plan for the floor that is not 100% that you can take some extra material. And the final point is make sure that you check your product before you head out onto the job site. Yes, 100%. Nati, thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, like, uh, we're going to be talking about a whole lot of different adhesive issues on the channel. Uh, this is the first of many. But thank you so much. I appreciate your time and your thank support, you. PK support, of the Workshop Studio in Flooring Africa. Thank you, Barry. Thank I hope you, you subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>